there was no creator, no God. So when you are in your own home, in your own self, reflect on it. And then say, really, why, why, why do I die in the first place? Okay, I've got a program. Why do I have a hospitalist built in, in, in the genetic code? All my cells die, 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 and eventually I die. Why can I not stop a found the answer for that. God, the God. creator. That's the answer for found it. No, no, it is the only rational answer. There is no other alternative. Whatever you say, you know that definitely this is our creator who created us. Then you should ask yourself, why? I didn't ask to be created. Why did my creator create me? He created all of this. Look, he created lungs and the air outside to breathe in to sustain my life. He created a stomach and a digestive system and he created food all around me so that I can use and utilize this food. It seems to be like all plants. So in this whole cosmos and you know the environment and the, and the, the, the reality, why am I created? Am I created for a reason or no reason? Is it just a mere play by my creator? It's just a jest and play? Or God's just created by play? He's playing. Or is there a noble purpose? If all my organs have a specific set purpose, my eyes don't hear, they can only see. My ears hear and keep me in balance. Yeah? They don't see. So why that, that we have organs which have a set purpose? So individual parts of, our, of my body have a specific purpose. And once put together, all together, I have no purpose. Apart from somebody says, be happy. That's my purpose. Oh, be kind to people, that's happy. Or, life is like a cigar. Doesn't matter how you smoke it. If the purpose of my organs is not set by me, my whole self, I can't set my purpose, just like my organs. Something has set the purpose of my whole body. And I can clearly see that there is an over purpose in everything. So, that purpose is what I need to find out. How am I going to find out? Unless I don't look for the signs of God in the creation. The signs of God, I can ask. Has this God who created me, this creator, communicated? Or just left me like in a total confusion? Oh, do you exist? You need to question. Or has there been a communication from the creator saying, yeah, I created you for a reason, and that's why I don't just show myself like this to you. People ask, God exists, why can't I see him? Isn't it? Ask yourself, if something appears in the sky and says, I am God, do you think really the atheists would believe that's God? Quran tells us even if there were stairs ascending up to the sky and the dead could speak, there are people still don't believe. They would say, oh, we are mesmerized. We have been in delusion. We have been in delusion. This is all a delusion. It's an illusion. That's what we would say, oh, some kind of projection of an image there, a voice. They won't believe. So that what we're saying is belief has to be something from your own heart, from your own self. Knowing that all of this is not a product of just nothingness. That's why Quran, as I said earlier, engages with people to think and reflect. Says, Am khuliqu min ghayri shayi, am humul khaliqoon, am khalaqu samawati wal ard, bal la yuqinoon, am khuliqu min ghayri shayi. Have they been created from absolute nothingness? No. Am humul khaliqoon. Were they themselves the creators? Meaning, did we create our own self? No. Am khalaqu samawati wal ard. Did we create the heavens and the earth? No. Quran then rhetorically says, you cannot. They have no certainty, no certain faith. Because they will always say, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know. That's what scientists and atheists and agnostics would say, we don't know. But this question reminds and tells us that there is someone who created us. There is someone who organized all of this, controls all of this, is in effect control of all the affairs. And is going to bring about the end of this universe. So, why are we not grateful? The question is linked with gratefulness. If, if, if someone has an accident, you take them to the hospital and you give blood, you give your own kidneys to save them, 
when they wake up from this problem and they hear the story from the doctors, what would be their natural response? Be grateful. They should say thank you for saving my life. Not that I didn't want it. They should say they will be thankful. So this response is only natural. It's, it's gratitude is a natural response. When the Creator created us, gave us all of our life, both of our kidneys, yeah, and the blood circulation, and the heart to pump and circulate the blood, the food to eat and to digest the food around in, inside the body. What is our natural response to all of this that is be given to us? It should be, thank you. But people don't thank God because they're saying, how can someone greater than me exist? If you think about it, people, one of the other re reasons, people don't want to believe in God because they think, how can someone greater than me exist? How can I be created? I recommend you to re um, watch, if you haven't done also, in PBS, in YouTube channel, the vastness of our universe. Recently uploaded, okay? It's a popular um, channel about science, talking about white holes and black holes. Now you know I'm talking about someone who knows their stuff. They show you how insignificant we are in this universe. The, we, compared to this Earth, we like having a speck. The Earth, in our solar system, is like a speck. The solar system, in our Milky Way galaxy, is like a speck. Our Milky Way galaxy, in terms of the other galaxies, is like a speck. And all the other galaxies, billions of them, we are nothing. That vastness of this universe, this cosmos, if you think about it, the one who created this, and we are saying, I want him to be like me. Yeah. We have to really humble ourselves and be humble and, and, and show this humility. That's why when Muslims pray, their prayer of this gratitude is showing this humility at the same time. That we lower our forehead, we bow down like this on our knees. See how my forehead is going down? Then I put my forehead on the ground. That is the utmost sign of my humility. When people want to, you know, make me surrender, they want to like make you bow down. Okay, bow down to me, bow down to me. You know, historically like me in this. Why? Because bowing down means that you have acknowledged someone is greater than you, powerful than you and so on. So the utmost sense of humility is when you put your forehead on the ground and you're saying, there is something greater than I. In fact, there is something greater than everything. You say, Allahu Akbar. God is greater than anything. Whatever you imagine, God is greater than that. And you submit and you surrender. That kind of submission is your self-realization of you in this cosmos. That yes, there is a greater being who created me, who has put me in this place for a reason. So what do I have to do? I should follow, seek his guidance. If he's really someone who is compassionate and merciful. And guess what? Throughout the Quran, apart from one chapter, because it's a chapter of war, in a warfare, it starts with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Each surah means like a chapter, there are 114 of them. It starts with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God who is Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. This, the words Ar Rahman Ar Rahim means someone who is you know, full of mercy, giver of mercy, someone who is you know, totally compassionate and merciful. Both. One who is merciful and the one who is eternally merciful and, and, and last is merciful. They are two cognates. They don't mean the same like that. So God is merciful and compassionate, very gracious. That means we should expect, we should expect God showing us guidance. And we are not mistaken. Throughout the times in history, there has been prophets and messengers who said, we have been appointed by your creator to be a mouthpiece to tell you about God and your life and the life to come and what you're supposed to do and what you're supposed not to do. Prophets and messengers all came with the same message. Be grateful to God. Worship. Worship. The essence of worship is gratefulness, gratitude. So worship with God and avoid worshipping false gods. Giving all that, you know, love, honor and respect and glory to something else. That's what we do tend to do. If you don't give that to God, You'll be giving that to pop stars and singers and musicians and football stars and your celebrities. You will be directing this because that's already been built. If you if you don't direct this reverence and gratitude to God, 
you will try to give it to someone else before silence. God says, avoid false gods and give that to God because He has the right of this. He created you. Okay? So, our role and responsibility is simple. is to find that revelation of God. Find that guidance of God. We Muslims don't claim God said this religion, careful, said this religion as the only religion now. Just, just, it will, if, it will go away if you don't move. Ah, he wants to listen. No, no, sorry. No, no, if you, if you try to hit it, it's going to defend itself. Right? If you let it go, he thinks, okay, it's a very nice people around. <laughs> Right. Right. Yeah? So, just like that, when it comes, a snake don't really bite unless you try to make it into danger and threaten it. Okay, man, sorry. I think we have to go. Sure, sure, have, sure, sure. But it was very okay. nice. We will yeah. think so, about please, it. as I said, reflect early hours in, in the morning and look into the Quran, look into Islam. Because I was going to, just going to show you the revelation, which is the Quran. Look into it, read it, question it, and see what you find in there. Because if you have a sincere mind and you're willing to be guided by this God that you know is your creator, God will guide you because God is not unjust. He is just and merciful to his creation. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. See you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.